Hello and welcome to this feature spotlight video on lighting and textures with Unreal Rendering for Emulate 3D 2025. I'm Andrew Diebel, the product manager for Emulate 3D. We're going to look into how we can set up our models to be as visually impressive as possible to make impactful renders. We'll look at adding custom lights into the model, defining textures and normal maps, and fine-tuning reflectivity. We can then use all those lovely existing Emulate 3D techniques such as the camcorder component to set up views and smooth camera paths. As a reminder, we'll want to make sure we change to use the movie display, which was described in the last Feature Spotlight video. This is going to turn the graphics up to max. If you use another display mode, then reflectivity and advanced lighting effects may not be enabled. Remember there's a quick toggle for display modes in the bottom left hand corner. Okay, first of all, let's have a look at setting up material textures. Every visual in our model is going to have material properties. So if we select this can here, we can see that it's got three separate materials. One is the top and bottom of the can. Number two is going to be this upper section of the label. And number three is the lower section of the label. And we can see that they're separate materials because if we go in the Arrange tab and use this Paint tool, we can change each part of these meshes separately. So we can change the top material, uh, just with one click. It's quite fun as well to change the colors of other objects and see how the lighting works in Unreal. So let's change the belt to be a nice bold green color. And maybe we can change uh, the side here to be a bold yellow. Look at that. Now that is horrible. Maybe let's undo that one just there. Much better. We can fully edit the material properties using the properties grid or through scripting. So let's go into this top section of the label and we can see we can change the color directly here. But we can also change things like the texture of our material. And this is currently set to be the Emulate 3D logo. But if we open up our texture selector, then we can bring in other files too. So here we've got the Rockwell Automation logo, which we could bring in. And you see that's gonna be pasted nicely on top of our can. Our texture can be scaled, so it wraps around nicely. At the moment, we're drawing our texture twice around in the X direction, so front and back. And we're drawing it once in the vertical direction, but we could change this, so we might want to tile them to be smaller and placed more frequently. As well as setting textures, we can also set normal textures or normal maps, which represents the bumpiness of an object. This is easiest to show if we looked at the reflectivity first. So let's go and look at the bottom section of this label. Let's just remove the texture that was there. And let's go and set the reflectivity of our material to be high. And we might want to make it look nice and silver in the bottom section before we increase the reflectivity. A reflectivity of zero means that it's going to be completely matte and 100 is going to be a complete mirror, as you can see down here. Values of maybe 70 to 80, I think, look a lot more reasonable for shiny metallic objects. Now, the reflectivity shows how the light bounces off the object, but if we set a normal map that we can change the direction that the light bounces off the object as it hits different parts of that texture. Normal textures look a little bit odd, if we want to choose one, and maybe we'll use one that's in the Emulate 3D installation directory, you can see that they're this blue-purple kind of mix. And you can find these on a, a number of free-to-use websites online or use some of the ones that come with Emulate 3D itself. This is effectively a depth map that shows the height of the object, the bumpiness. And as we apply it to our visual, you'll see that it really changes how the light bounces off this particular can. As we get the glint of the light, you can see the bumpiness that's been applied to the bottom of the can here. It becomes more apparent if you increase the re reflectivity, or if you change this normal depth. The normal depth is the actual height that's been replicated by the normal map itself. So a larger depth makes it look more cavernous, more bumpy. Now, normal maps come in two directions. If you find that you import one and it's it's going in when you expect it to be out, you can set a negative normal depth and it just flips 
the higher parts with the lower parts in your texture itself. And like the texture scaling, you can scale your normal maps too, which is especially useful if you find a texture pack which contains both a normal texture and a texture together. So let's have a look at how that might work. Let's go and get ourselves a new conveyor. Let's go and look at the surface material property of this conveyor. And this is actually a special texture which moves as the belt moves. Let's set it to have a normal texture, which is going to be this kind of metal grid effect. And there we go. We can see a small amount of this bumpiness um, that's been replicated. It's not actually changing the height of the object, it's just changing how the light interacts with the surface, which gives it the visual appearance of having a height difference, which becomes more apparent if we set a reflectivity. That looks good. And then let's set a matching texture as well, including sections which are transparent, which gives us this really nice kind of grating effect on the conveyor and then let's see it in action by bringing in some loads perhaps some colorful cardboard boxes and we can see how the light looks really nice reflecting off the combination of the texture and the the normal texture for this belt Talking of lighting, we can set up custom lights with the Unreal Rendering Engine 2. Every model comes with a light, and we can see this if we go to the Visualization tab and show the lights just here. And there's our light that is providing us with the shadows. It is a directional light that's coming downwards from a slight angle. And this is basically like a light source at an infinite distance away, like the sun, it brings in shadows from one direction, and if we rotate the light by using my scroll wheel here, we'll see the shadows moving. We can also change the angle up and down as well, as we please. Um, there is, on top of this directional light, there is ambient lighting that comes from all directions as well, which means that we don't get very dark areas that are in shadow. And this can be changed on the scene itself. It's a property that varies from model to model because it's saved on the scene. This ambient intensity, if it's set to be very high, kind of gives us light from everywhere and that directional light becomes unimportant. Shadows become much lighter. And if it's set to zero, then our light source is the only light source in the model, um, which can be very useful if we set up different types of lights like point lights or spotlights. We can have multiple lights within our model at once. And we can do this by either going right click, new, basic, light, or by copying and pasting the existing lights. Or by bringing out a pre-made light from a catalog. We've got a couple of options of our light types which we can use. The spotlight is going to give us lots of control and it's great for when we place multiple lights within our model itself. So notice here that I have the ambient intensity set to zero. If you have the ambient intensity set up, then you won't see quite as dramatic a spotlight effect. We'll keep it low to really show off the properties of this spotlight. We can control the spotlight by changing its intensity and color, which is going to be how bright it is. A nice bold red color is potentially too much. Let's make it a nice white light to keep things simple and by changing the inner and outer angles of the spotlight. This inner angle is going to be the bright central light. You see if I set the value to be something that's larger than the outer angle, we get an incredibly crisp edge to our spotlight. The outer angle is going to be a blending, a blurring between the strong central light and darkness on the outside. So if we set a outer angle just here, then we get that softer edge. If I set it to be a little bit smaller, then we see a blending between the inner angle and the outer angle. Some sort of compromise like this, I think, produces a nice lighting effect. Now we can have as many lights as we want in our model, and we can copy and paste them. We can put them as 
children of moving objects, so the light sources move, which can make for dramatic effects, and we can produce some really nice lighting that will interplay with all of the textures and the reflectivity and the uh, normal maps that we've set up on our visuals as well. We can also create point light sources with a editable radius. The radius is going to affect the size of that light emitter and therefore how sharp the shadows are. And these are completely dynamic. We can add as many lights as we want into our model and create some really nice effects by combining them together. We hope you make the most of the new features within the Unreal rendering engine and create some truly impressive renders of your models and showcase your designs. And remember, all the examples from this and the previous Spotlight video were real time. This is actually what you see when you're using Emulate 3D. We can't wait for you to get your hands on the Unreal rendering engine in Emulate 3D 2025.